the role and the responsibility of a husband to be loving. The first one is in verse 25. I'm going to call it sacrificial love. Uh, this isn't in your outline or, or your notes, but uh, I want to highlight it to you just in Scripture as I'm reading through this. Um, verse 25, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. There's a sacrificial kind of love that every husband is to provide. This looks like uh, seeking her needs above your own needs. So men, you're not called to think of yourself first. You're called to think of your wife first. Um, I think sacrifice uh, should include uh, even financial sacrifice. Uh, and when you're building a budget and when you think about your wife, uh, does she have a budget authority uh, to make decisions uh, uh, does she have priority, perhaps even in the vehicle she drives, uh, the vacations that you go on? There should be a sacrificial mindset of the husband not seeking his own glory, but the glory of God in emulating uh, the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Verse 28, uh, let's look at that. It says this, it's a caring kind of love. In the same ways, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Uh, but you should be caring for yourself, uh, gentlemen. This is implied, and you should care for your bride. And we'll get to how that looks like on an emotional level uh, here in just a minute. So there is a sacrificial love, a cleansing love, in verse 28, a caring love. Um, the gospel marriage is this, is that it loves and respects unconditionally. This is what you should do in your marriage. You provide love even when the person doesn't deserve it. You provide respect even when the person doesn't deserve it. This is a Jesus-like kind of love and respect. This is a mystery between Christ and the church. This is gospel, good news, kinds of marriages. Amen? Uh, you need to understand that there is no perfect man out there. Ladies, um, this should hopefully encourage you to know that I am saying there is not any man out there that is not going to struggle. He's going to have three significant struggles. One is with sin, the other one is with self, and the last one is with Satan. And the sinful side is just uh, every person is born into sin. Men will either tend and trend towards two areas in the role of headship that is very uh, dangerous. One is the over-domineering headship where they're kind of pushy and rude. Or the other flip side extreme is more the passive side, just doesn't do anything. And both are really hard to respect because he should not be passive, and then he should not be. What he's supposed to be is a kind, loving, gentle husband who cares for his wife, but is still strong and masculine. Um, so, um, first of all, men, I know that you struggle. I struggle. I can be rude and disrespectful. And um, what can happen is because of sin, men, is that you can act like you know all the answers. Or, on the flip side, over here, you're actually so afraid to lead in your role, you don't say anything. And so there is a sin issue that is in all men. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, it just says men will, in the end days, will be lovers of themselves. They'll be greedy, pursuing all sorts of ungodliness. And there is a, a, just a curse on manhood that, that sh is a struggle to either be overly dominant or incredibly passive. Um, the struggle is with self. Everybody has weaknesses, and our struggle is with Satan. Satan is against you, man. He is against your marriage. He wants to destroy your marriage. He wants you to be a statistic. He wants you to be a fallout. He does not want you to model Jesus Christ. This means that there should be an active work of you, uh, you growing in your godliness and your goodness. Um, ladies, this gives you hope that your husband is perhaps a late bloomer in the spiritual department. Um, this is okay. Um, he needs to be growing, though. And where there's evidences of growth that you should applaud, affirm, encourage, and say, thank you for that. I see that. I'm praying for you. Um, husbands... Uh, but you must be growing like Jesus Christ. Your pattern and picture for what it looks like to be a good man is Jesus. 
Number three, husbands are called to be protectors. All throughout the scripture, you get this idea that husbands are to be protectors. Um, they're sp- supposed, supposed to protect in three different ways. I would say physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Um, physically, you're, you should be a protector, but you're supposed to be that, man. And some of you don't feel masculine enough because you have a small frame, you're not strong, you don't work out, you're not healthy. I would say do what you can to be physically strong. Go pick up the groceries. Go move the furniture. Provide for your wife that strength and encouragement. And then uh, number four, I would say this, is that uh, you are to be the, the provider. Husbands are called to be the providers. And this happens in three, three different ways. These are critical needs of every wife. Is first, that you're providing financially. Second, that you'd be providing um, spiritually, and third, emotionally. Um, financially, it's, it's very uh, clear the Bible uh, challenges and pushes the man to provide for the needs of his household, his family, and his relatives. So, um, spiritually speaking, uh, husbands are to be providers. They're supposed to find a good church. They lead by example. They show what it looks like, spiritually speaking, as best as they can, that they care for their family. It's providing leadership. This is a need of the wife, that you provide some level of leadership uh, for the family when it comes to morals, ethics, Uh, Christian values. You can do this by being a part of a church. You can do this by modeling what it looks like to to forgive, to uh, repent, and turn from sin. 